from a very happy College Park. Maryland scores 79 today. It's 79 to nothing. Maryland over Howard. I'm Wayne Viner. It's Bruce Posner. And this is the Big Dog Post Game Show here on the Red Turtle Network. Bruce, what did you see today? I saw that, as Donald Science would say, the elephant was playing the ant. Right? And the ant, the ant was only getting 30 points, supposedly. And the elephant put him to sleep. It was, I, you know, what do you say about this game? I think more than anything else, even with the 79 points, it was a defensive domination. I think their first seven series were three and out. Oh, they didn't get over midfield. They couldn't punt the ball. Howard couldn't punt the ball past midfield. One of the assistant coaches asked me to punt. Right? <laughs> I said, Wayne's well, on the field. Yeah. I, 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 and the kid had a 72-yard punt. Uh, well, he had some trouble hanging on the ball early you know on. Like, you know what I like? This is what I like from the game. And believe it or not, I thought Piggy played great. And I thought Josh Jackson played more than good. He had 245 yards thrown. Yeah. Uh, the Jackson running, did. Jackson. Right. And four touchdowns. The running game wasn't there today. Okay, early. Watch, let's not get run over here as we wait the TV equipment to go by. Right. Uh, the first couple of plays for Maryland didn't look so hot, and then, wow. It was over. Yep. I mean, it was 28 nothing in the first period. I don't 56 know. to nothing at halftime, which was a record. And the, statistically, it's, it's not even a game worth talking about. Yep. This was The scrimmages were a little more competitive than this game was. The Maryland band's about to start up behind us. I'm going to tell you something that you probably didn't see on TV, and I think you'll agree with me. The story of the game was the 100 or so recruits that stayed for the whole game, and we saw walk by us before we uh, taped this show. Bruce, what do you think of that football talent? That I was by absolutely us? blown away when I said to you, who are these guys walking down? And you started naming who they were. I'm telling you, 100 is a, is a low estimate. All right. yep. It was well over 100. They kept coming with their parents and brothers and sisters, but they were with their friends and coaches. I know the coach from Wise was here. You can right. name some of the other coaches. but it was. And I will. There are kids from Calvert Hall. There are kids from Northern. There's kids from Stone Ridge. Of course, there are kids from Wise. Uh, it's the who's who. Good counsel. It's who's who of football around here. I'm going to take back what I said. I think had lots to come here by now. They to he to have the dominance over these kids. I, I don't know. I think that's what we're going to talk about after this break. As usual, and as always this season, brought to you by the big dog, Rick Jack, which will be back at College Park in a moment. Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now. Don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Back here in College Park, it's still seventy-nine to nothing. Yes. Uh, Maryland over Howard. It was nice being the team with the 70. We're usually the team without the 70. I want to say one thing before we move on. Thank you to Viner Four Gates for the sponsorship and, of course, to Meyer Consulting Engineers. Yeah. And, of course, to the big doll, Rick Jacklish. And we're kind of racing against the band here. All right. So what's your, what's your, my here, take, here's the bottom line. My take is that it took the three years being in Alabama to have this program to have Loxley ready to be a coach at this level. I don't think it would have been as good had he come directly from being the interim coach to being the head coach. We know what happened today. All right, we're one and zero. Great. All right, next week, in essence, the season starts. Well, it's Syracuse next week. Syracuse I next week, and you know, Nick Saban said this: when you schedule your three non-conference games, you want one that's a guaranteed win. That was today. You want one that you might struggle against. That's Temple. And you want one that's almost even, and that's next week. 
All right, against uh, Syracuse. And Syracuse supposed to be one of the top three teams in the ACC. We'll see how that works out. We have to get inside for what's going to be a heck of a post-game press conference. All four quarterbacks played. Almost everybody on the roster played today. Fabulous. Yes, when you hear the score, you're going to think Locks did call off the dogs. He could have scored 150 points today if he wanted to. Right. He stopped. And he that, ran the ball. Did he throw any passes? No, Lance Lejean carried a couple. Uh, I missed one good, touchdown. It was a good day. Did you, you miss any? No, I saw all of them. But I missed Mabry's touchdown. I wanted to see that. All right. And by the way, Mabry was in bounds. On that catch, they call oh, him out of bounds. Without question. All right. Thanks to Jack Rothenberg for playing camera guy today. And uh, we're heading inside. You'll see the press conference up on TurpTalk.com. This is Wayne Viner, Bruce, Bruce Posner, Posner, and behind the camera, Jack Rothenberg. Good well, afternoon. Thing, Wednesday night, Turk Talk. Coach Wayne will be on. We're going to kind of discuss this game. But we're going to take a real close look at Syracuse. This is it. a big, big game for Maryland. All That's right. it, Wayne. That's it. Good afternoon.